Hey, it's me, Javid. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Demon Souls for the PlayStation 5. Hope you've been well. Hope you're staying safe. Obviously, things are going crazy in the world in the past two years. Well, year and, uh, you know, year and however many days we've been into this new year by the time that you watch this video. Anyways, I really do hope that you're staying safe and relatively, and things are going relatively okay in your life because, geez, Louise, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, 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 oh, boy. Okay, we're going to switch this to the Ring of Avarice, uh, which is going to get us more souls. And we're going to go kill the Necromancer once because we're on the cusp of a level up. Let's do that before we take on the final world, the final level of the third world. The uh, Tower of Latria. It's, uh, I don't even know what to call them. It's so weird. So we're going to hop down. Uh, Ring of Avarice obviously increases the amount of souls that we get. And if this were if this were pure black world tendency, we would have the maximum amount of souls from the Ring of Avarice and also being pure black world tendency. But it's neutral right now. You're going to jump on your head and bop, bop. See you later. Grab that. And just like that. Wow, I thought there would be more. But I guess because I'm used to the new game plus and new game plus two amounts because you get more souls enemies get much harder they deal more damage and they have more health uh in future new game pluses but they also drop more souls but that's not really much of a benefit because obviously you need more souls anyways to level up because you carry on with your soul level anyways we now should have enough hi there what's up hello blige so we're gonna head back we're gonna switch this ring back to the ring of regeneration the regenerators ring there is a ring of regeneration in dark souls 2 fun fact which by the way if you'd like to watch me 100 percent give that twitch channel a follow link is in the description and uh yeah that's what we're doing mainly over there it's gonna be a long series because dark souls 2 is a long game and 100 percent it takes a lot of time hello okay i need to level up if you'd be so kind we're gonna get endurance up to 25 Thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. B. All right, uh, we should be good now, right? Yes, we're gonna go take on the final level of the third world now. So we have the Ivory Tower, Archstone of the Maneater Demons. In the Ivory Tower, prisoners hung in cages, their flesh patched together to create fleshy monstrosities. It was the doing of Latria's new master, an old man who had long ceased to be human, seeking to create demons by his own hand. Now, I gotta think, actually, here. I gotta think. There is a thing that adds to your character tendency in a positive and in a negative way. If we go to this boss, and if we are online... You know, it's probably not even gonna happen, because last time I was online, and it didn't even happen. So I think we're fine. We can do this offline. Uh, but yeah, this boss here. Who boy. <laughs> Who boy. Uh... This boss is notorious. Also, look at our look at our world tendency. Yeah, that's gone up as well. That is definitely pure white, right? Yeah, dude. It's the same as Archstone of the Digger King. Huh. Which makes me wonder. Should I go do the thing now? Yeah, they definitely changed this, I think. It used to be, like I said, that you had to go through. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go see. So yeah, if we go to, let me think of the fastest way to get here. If we backtrack from here, there's two ways to get to where I want to get to. If we start at the front and then go through, that's pretty fast. If we start at the man eater, if we start at upper la, oh, if we start here and then go backwards, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go to upper latria. So yeah, I I feel like they definitely patched this uh, in the time since. I finished my previous playthrough, and since I started this Let's Play, it feels like they definitely 100% patched this. So we're going to test this right now. I should, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to test this right now. So, remember I told you there is a bridge that spawns if you're in pure white world tendency. Well, as I said, when I was playing this game before this playthrough, you had to kill all the bosses in a level for the world to be in pure white world tendency, with you not dying in body form at any point. And you can see we actually deal more damage to this guy, too. Yeah, the, the wider the world tendency, the more damage you deal. So we actually deal more damage to him as well. Uh, but they, it seems like they definitely patched it. Because there were a couple of patches. There was one patch near the start, I think. And then there was another patch I know that downloaded. So it seems like they definitely patched it to where you only have to kill like two bosses now. Instead of all three in each world. To get the world into pure white world tendency. Which is so weird. Again, if anybody knows the specifics, feel free to let me know. Because I'm genuinely curious. Either way... 
we are going to run back up to where that bridge was that I told you spawns if you get into pure white world tendency. I'm not even scared of these gargoyles at all because we're pretty darn strong at the moment. So they can uh, come after me all they want. The only thing I'm worried about is if they get me trapped, but I'm not even that worried about that either. Anyways, let's go up here. And we're looking for that elevator. Maybe we'll get some really good luck here and the elevator will just spot. Oh, boy. I was going to say, those guys probably died at two hits now, thanks to the world tendency. Elevator. Come on, I hear you. You're close. Gargoyles are coming. There you are. No, no, no. You stay down there where you belong. In fact, if I have a gesture where I can point down at the ground... I don't think I do, and I almost backstepped off the entire thing. That would have been quite silly. So if we're not actually in pure white world tendency, this will be a huge waste of time, fun fact. But I think that we are, because I think I saw last time that we were, right? After two bosses. Let's see. Yes, indeed. I see the bridge. See that? The bridge is spawned now. What in the actual hell? So why do you only have to kill two bosses now? That's so bizarre. So yeah, if we go to tendency again, that is pure white world tendency. You see the pure, uh, you know, the pure glow from it, which reminds me also... Oh, no, I wrote this down. Yeah, in the first world, once we get to pure white, we can uh, deal with the thing on the left. That'll become clear what I'm talking about. So, anyways, when you have pure white world tendency in level 3-2, this bridge spawns, okay? And then you can go across the bridge and get a really, really, really important item. Man, they must have changed that. What in the hell? Oh, yeah, and the last boss in this level, too, has something about the tendencies. Yeah, there's just so much to explain about that crap. Anyways, let's climb to the top of this where there will be a very important key, and that is the Prison of Hope, second floor, west cell key. So yeah, that is how you free Lord Rydell. Once again, good luck figuring that out. How in the hell are you ever going to figure that out? I don't know. But nevertheless, that's how you get the key to free Lord Rydell. Uh, you have to go through so much. And it's also bizarre, too, because they force you to basically just go through a bunch of hoops. Uh, okay, let's evacuate. God, I love this miracle. That is such a nice miracle to have. Now, the question is, do I want to go through with Lord Rydell? I think I do, right? But I'm just worried. No, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, let's go rescue Lord Rydell. So I'm trying to think in my head, how is the... Uh, I'm trying to think in my head. I'm trying to think. how. What's the best way to get... We have to go from the prison, right? Because if you if you spawn here at Upper Latria, you can't go backwards. Also, I just realized that kind of looks like a spider web. That's really neat. All those chains there. Yeah, we have to go here because you can't go backwards from here. Okay, let's go to the Prison of Hope. So, two things happen. Two things happen when you get pure white world tendency in, in World 3. One of them is that you can now uh, rescue... You can get that key and then go to Lord Rydell and rescue him. The other thing is that there's rubble near Lord Rydell as well uh, that now is gone. And I think that lets you get an item. I don't remember exactly. I'm trying to think of the best way. What are you doing? Don't even think about it, mister. Try to think of the best way to get down to Lord Rydell. In uh, the original Demon Souls, there was a way to jump off of these, like, guard railings to fall all the way down really fast. Oh, man, we one-shot him now. That feels good. And I don't remember exactly uh, how they do it in the speed run. Oh, it feels so good to kill those guys in one hit. Also, I'm, I preemptively, preemptively... Excuse? These guys seem, like, way more aggressive than, than usual, which is bizarre preemptively spamming X on the PlayStation 5 controller to uh, grab whatever items because those Cthulhu guys drop uh, spices when you kill them sometimes. Feels like half the time. Okay, I'm trying to remember how to even get down. What is it? The second floor key, right? So he's near the bottom. So I think what we do is we go all the way to the bottom. He's not up here, is he? If he is, he's through this. I don't think he is though. This is the no. These are like the hallways without the cells. Yeah, I think I think it's one more flow, uh, one more floor below here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this should be floor two, I think. Yep, because there's an item over there that we haven't grabbed yet. Nope, nope. Okay, so yeah, this gives you a trophy as well. So we're gonna open up all the cells here. See, there's one here. Aha! See that? Okay. Oh wait! Oh wait! Uh, now, a lot of these rooms have absolutely nothing. These guys have a chance to drop lotus flowers or whatever, which help us with plague and with bleed, which, again, I've never had to use the bleed thing. Probably because it just doesn't show you when bleed's affecting you. I don't know. The noble's lotus is good, though, because, uh, yeah, poison is a problem in this game. Uh, anyways. 
So there we go. That's how you get the second floor west cell key. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so let's equip the compound longbow and the light arrows. And get this guy down. Got to remember it automatically. Oh, yeah. That's how you, yeah. You have to shoot the bodies in the future games, but in this game, you have to just shoot the chain. Which I like better, to be honest, because it makes more sense. Anyways, I've done it, my friend. I have no idea what weapon that is in his uh, left hand there, by the way. I have no idea. I should have every weapon in the game in my other playthroughs. I don't know what that is. Why, thank you. Thank you, kind soul. Please, take this fine piece of work. I have no use for it now. And thus begins my final, eternal rest. Dull Rat's Ring. Uh, okay, thank you. Bye. You can kill him, I think, for something, but we're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, that, um, yeah, well, um, well, there's something with him. Something else. Should not have unequipped that. Oh, yeah, talismans. Have we gotten any other talismans? I gotta never use this, um... You know, I've never used Miracles, so I gotta check. Anyways, so that's that. Yeah, you get a trophy for that, but I already have it, of course. Uh, and then there's rubble here that gets removed in pure white world tendency as well. So then, we can grab these items also. Unknown hero soul. Unknown hero soul. Moonlight stone shard. See, a lot of the time, it's just really boring stuff you get. It's not... Like, you need to get unique rings, unique items, unique, unique weapons and armor. <laughs> The future games do a very good job with that. The future games uh, often reward you much better than this game. But this game is a little, you know, dated. Uh, the base game, anyways. Uh, so let's take a look at that dull rat's ring that he gave us. Defense rises when HP is at 30% or lower. Really crappy ring. Uh, there's a lot of that version. There's, there's a lot of versions of that ring in future Souls games. Three-cornered hat. Ah, okay, that's neat. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. We need some equipment, man. So there we got a witch hat, a three cor uh, three cornered witch hat. Uh, let's see, anything in here? Looks like nothing. Got to check the roofs, the roof to see if there's any like hanging bodies that we could shoot down. And I don't remember what's here, but usually when there's an item on a body like that, it's better than a typical soul or something. Yeah, the Venerable Sage set, which I think is the same set Freak has, uh, who we rescued here a long time ago. We got one more cell door, and there is nothing. All right, so that's that. That is uh, World 3 1 and 2 completely and utterly done. So we are going to evacuate. Let's do that, which sounds disgusting when I say it, but you know. And I'm going to cross out Rydell because Rydell has been rescued. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into rescuing him, but uh, if you know what you're doing, it ain't all that bad. We are going to repair our equipment. Now, Rydell actually doesn't show up here. He's kind of just done. I guess because he's in soul form? I don't really know. Anyways, that's it for Rydell. All right, so now we are going to go do this thing that I said we were going to do at the end of the last episode, but unfortunately we ran out of time because the man-eaters. So the ivory tower, once again. Yeah, and uh, like I said, my first... Uh, all the playthroughs before this playthrough, I have had to kill all the bosses in a world before I was able to do that. So they definitely changed that, for sure. Okay, now... I'm going to explain something with this boss before we go do it. This boss is notoriously, uh, everybody hates it. I have not had trouble with it because I've kind of gotten decent luck with what happens with it. But in the olden days of, uh, Dark Souls, uh, Demon Souls 3, in the old days of Demon Souls on the PlayStation 3, this boss was notorious. Uh, should I even explain how he works now or after? Well, I guess what I'll just say is... If you're online, if you're playing online when you come to this part, there will be a chance that what you fight is an actual player who gets some buffs uh, for being the boss, the summoned boss. And I'll explain more once we defeat him, because I, I don't want to spoil it, but at the same time, it's a, it's a bizarre boss, to say the least.
Now, what happened there is really interesting when it comes to the lore. Basically, as far as I understand it, we met the, uh... We met the noble lady, right? And she said that, like, uh, a strange old man... These things always look alive. Look at that, man. Oh, God, those things are disgusting. A strange old man came to this world and basically took over... Like, uh, originally came to this world, and then the the, the aristocracy, the, uh, the, the people in charge, treated him bad or something? So he left and came back with a bunch of demons in tow and then took over. Uh, and then took over this place and then locked up all the nobles, which is why that noble lady is imprisoned. Uh, and then, like, he had these yellow robes that, from what I understand, could be a reference to the King in Yellow, which is actually a book a, uh, a viewer sent me a while ago that I read. A really old sort of cosmic horror book that I think inspired Lovecraft. I'm getting really in-depth here. Anyways, point is, uh, he came back with, like, these yellow robes or something that kind of take you over. Uh, I I'm butchering this, I'm sure. But, so, like, he, he's been up there sitting on a, on a throne of spite, basically, this whole time, locking up everybody that used to be in power. And then, I don't know whether he summoned something, or the robe summoned something, or something just got summoned. And then the robes abandoned him, and he died. That was him dying right there, the old monk. And then the robes took over that person that spawned. So... What happens is if you're on if you're offline or if there's just nobody online to be summoned, you'll fight a guaranteed NPC every time who we're about to see because we're offline. But if a player when you're playing online like invades, he will be summoned as or, or if a player tries to help another player, they will be summoned as that guy and then you'll have to fight them with their weapons and their move set, but they'll also get some bonuses too. Uh, and if you get summoned and fight somebody else, and I think if you win, you get the old robe as a hat, which offers zero defense, but it does give you, I think, better magic damage or something like that. It's bizarre. But the reason people hate it, as you can imagine... Whoa, this guy struck. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you can see everybody gets buffed as you move through the different levels of a world. Because that guy is way stronger than the previous version. So as you can imagine... This boss is very, very RNG dependent, whether or not you get somebody that, you know, really knows what they're doing or whether whether or not you get somebody that has no clue what they're doing. And, um, yeah, it could just be really easy and free or it could be impossibly difficult, depending on... One more. Come on. So scary. Oh, the crystal lizard. Oh, I keep forgetting there's a crystal lizard up here. Depending on who you fight. Uh, we're going to do the really kind of brain-dead AI version just because... Yeah, I'm not about to waste an entire episode fighting NPCs that... Or fighting people that specifically just come here to be summoned and that are really good at PvP because they'll probably just kill me over and over and over again. Um, I would give it a shot, but we're doing this whole playthrough on offline. But anyways, this boss is really kind of lame when you do it offline or when they're... And that's the other thing is that this game's kind of dead now already, it feels like. So it could just be, you know, we even if we play online, it could just summon this guy anyways. Uh, do I... I really need to take those buffs out of my storage. Why do I not do that? Okay, uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go for it. It should be easy, but you never know. Let's do it. Oh my god, it's the old monk! Yeah, so he does soul arrow. And then he kind of just rushes, rushes you? With his claw. Wow, we're dealing a lot of damage already. So he kind of just rushes you, and he has these mannequin claws. They're called mannequin claws. In uh, Dark Souls 3, I believe. In this game, I think they're just called Claws. I don't remember. And see, he gets these. Oh, okay. You're being cheeky, man. See, he gets these uh, homing soul arrows. All right. I want to kill him in a cool way. So I'm going to try to do that. Whoa. Whoa. Almost got me there. Okay. One more hit, and then we're going to kill him in the cool way. Actually. Whoa. Okay. 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 I'm playing a little, playing a little, uh, cheeky here. Whoa! The chair, the chair. All right, let's just go for it. No, 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 no. Let's just go for it. Yeah! Ring of Avarice, quick. And that's the old monk. How many souls do we get with the Ring of Avarice equipped? I don't think this guy gives us too many souls regardless. 29,640. Okay, that's higher than I thought. 
So yeah, the old monk sits up. I, I mean, look at this. Look at this room. It, it just once again, the aesthetics of this game are impeccable, man. So those are all the chairs that I assume the uh, the you know the royalty use, and then he built like a giant throne on top of all that. I wonder what the other chairs sig signif uh, si ugh, signify. These two chairs here and these two chairs here, because obviously he was up there. So yeah, the robes just abandon him and uh, take over somebody. Again, I don't know if he summoned them or if the robes summoned them, but the robes just abandon him and uh, abandon the old monk, and then he dies, and then the real boss is just a player which this brain dead ai is very boring he just attacks you with mannequin claws and then he gets the homing soul arrows which uh if you get summoned for you get those homing soul arrows as well and there's something in dark souls 3 that a lot of people don't realize in the final dlc for dark souls 3 there's a boss very similar to this that is a reference to this because uh very similar things happen i don't want to give that away in case uh you know anybody wants to play that but yeah you can see there's uh, paintings that are clawed out too. I noticed this the last time I played. I was like, there's a lot of detail here. A lot of sort of sort of royalty paintings that are just kind of, you know, scratched out. Because this guy just had a lot of spite. I don't remember why, and I don't remember if it even says why. But I know that he was, uh, he was, you know, he, he, he took offense to something. And he came back and basically took over and locked up everybody in the jail cells. So really interesting lore. Uh, there is a... <laughs> notorious youtuber and streamer that uh that raged hardcore at this in the original demon souls while he was playing online against an actual player and uh, yeah it's, it's kind of it's just a kind of a notorious boss uh you know which i never realized until i played this myself up until recently but yeah it works the same i don't know how active the community is now i don't know how active you'll get an actual person i'm sure there are people out there that uh, out there that make this their whole life trying to get summoned for this but the only thing you get and we get the golden demon soul there too the only thing that you get is uh like i said the uh, the old monk robes or whatever which again don't have any defense at all as a hat it just increases your magic damage i think throne room of yormadar archstone of the old monk demon his revenge complete, the old man withered away, driven to madness by the golden robes that controlled his body. Now too frail to serve as a vessel, he was fully absorbed by the demon's soul. So there you go. Explains all that right there. And that is it for World 3. That is it. Other than, again, if we bring the world tendency down to pure black, which, how do you even do that, actually? What's it at now? It's still at pure white. Yeah. So just, yeah, certain worlds give you ways to reduce it to pure black. But with this one, it stays at pure white. So yeah, you would have to die. So basically, how to reduce that from pure white world tendency to pure black world tendency to get the final thing, which is uh, a black phantom kill that gives you a unique weapon. How to do that is basically you have to use seven stones of ephemeral eyes. In fact, I just realized I wasted a death there. I should have died in that world. Because the literal, the only thing... Literally, the only thing we have left to do is bring it down to uh, pure black. So, you have to use Stones of Ephemeralize. And you have to die seven times in body form to take it from... Although, I don't know if they changed that now. Because it seems like they changed some stuff. I don't, I don't really understand. But, you have to die a whole bunch of times. I had to do it seven times. That was me. To bring it from pure white down to pure black, and then a black phantom version of Rydell spawns, and if you kill him, you get a unique weapon. So that's basically what happens. Uh, also, every time you bring a world to pure black world tendency, a primeval demon spawns as well. Uh, so you can kind of kill all those, and kill the unique NPC for each world, and then you're pretty much done. So yeah, that's it. So now we have world 2 completely done. We have world 3 completely done. We have world 4 completely done. We have World 5 not started whatsoever, and we have World 1 uh, at uh, World three uh, at Level 3, which I, I know is confusing as hell. Anyways, let's go ahead and use these souls. Okay, let's go ahead and store some stuff. Let's see here. We're going to store the Golden Demon Soul, which I love how it has a little animation. It moves around over there. That's so cool. Uh, anything else? Oh, man. It does the thing again. Stop. Auto equipping. I don't want it. I know you can turn it off. I know. How is what it said? Okay, let's see. Uh, store that and store these, and then we're gonna take a look. Uh, yeah, let's store everything first. All of our upgrade materials and this and that and this and that and this and providential ring we want. Ring of avarice we want. Thief ring we want. 
Cling ring we want. Dull rats ring we're never, ever, ever going to use. Play resistance ring we want. Poison resistance ring we want. Gash resistance, yes. Flame resistance, yes. Fragrant, yes. Regenerator's ring, yes. Okay, then we're going to go over here, switch to storage, and I could really use... Wait, what? Did we really use all of our buffs? Huh. I thought we had some buffs left over. Guess not, though. We do some buffs, but I, I, I mean def uh, offensive buffs. Oh, yeah. I wanted to go here. And I wanted to look. We have no other talismans. We have two talismans of God. I do believe there are others, though. We are indebted, we are indebted to you. I know you are, buddy. I know. You don't have to say it every single time. Okay. May the heavens gaze um, thus. Right. Umbasa to you as well. <gasps> Whee! Oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, it is. Oh, freak. Okay, he's got no new uh, dialogue. But look at that. We do have a new spell from the Golden Demon Soul. Send black phantoms back to their world. Miracle derived from the soul of the old monk demon returns nearby black phantoms to their own worlds. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of a, the mad old man who summoned black phantoms only to enslave them. So yeah, that's the, that's the old monk that we took out. Interesting. So if somebody invades you, you could just banish them. Who the hell? <laughs> I wonder if that's ever happened. Yes, I thought you must remember. Hey, I, I'm sure that's a, I'm sure that has happened. Yes. Then they but like, it's just like, man, that's so specific. You have to get invaded by a real world player, so you have to be online, and then you have to have that banish spell equipped and have enough magic to use it, and then use it to banish them, which gives you nothing other than just sending them away, which keeps you safe, I guess. Weird. Anyways, where's the candle maiden at? Gosh, it's annoying trying to find her. The heck are you? She must be on the stairs. I'm just not seeing her. She only spawns in like five places or so. There you are. Ah, she did a weird rotation. Yes, I do seek the power of the bit bit bit. Uh, boop boop. Perfect. Okay, bye. Wee. Uh, let's see. We have a little bit of time here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Ring of Avarice and switch this to the Thief Ring. And then go to the Kling Ring. We're going to switch this to the Providential Ring. Raises item discovery. And then we're going to head over to Stonefang Tunnel. We're going to go to the Tunnel City. Yes. And we're going to see if we get lucky. Because I could use one chunk. If I get one chunk, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be good. No, no, no. I'm always on the fence of whether or not I should cut these things out of the out of the out of the playthrough or not. I, I my style is ten, it tends to be just to show everything because I feel like I don't know if I was watching to try and get hints on what to do or watching to try and get better at the game. Not saying I'm in any way like a guy that you should watch to get better at a game. Just saying like if I was watching a playthrough trying to figure out what the game was all about. I feel like I would want to show these things. I feel like I would want to see these things just to... In case, like, you missed it or you were doing something earlier and you didn't, uh... You know, you, you weren't watching at the time. So, like, even though we've already shown the crystal lizard nest, I just feel like it'd be good to show it again, like, one time? I don't know. I could be wrong on that respect. But either way, we're going to head over here. And again, if you watched this last time, you know what I'm going to do. You want to kill these two crystal lizards here, though. Clear stone shard. Sharp stone shard. Hey, there we go. We already got it. Yeah, we needed one more chunk, and we just got it. But obviously, we got to do the really, really satisfying thing. So we're going to un-two-hand our weapon, and we're going to rush in and make sure to press LB at the exact right time. And I'm just going to rush straight on over. We're going to miss this one that we see right in front of us, but that's okay. We're going to make up for it with a ton of other stuff. Okay, hi there, buddy. You're safe. Don't worry. Wee-hee! Okay, land on this guy and then do it. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah, look at all that. Beautiful. All right, let's see what we get. Large sharp stone shards are good. Uh, that wasn't good. Large sharp stone shards. Hell yeah. Clear stone. We want chunks and we're getting unlucky here. I don't even know if these guys can drop chunks, actually, but I'm assuming that they can. See, that's the way to do it, man. Now, there might be a more efficient way. You might be able to, like, kill the one at, at the front there and then drop down. I don't know. I don't know what the most efficient way to use God's Wrath is, but clearly that does work. Man, we got really lucky by getting that one chunk then because we didn't get much else out of that. Okay, so now we're going to use a Aged Spice. And we're going to evacuate. God, evacuate so nice. I freaking love it. I freaking love it. Okay, then. We were only missing one chunk, so we should be able to upgrade this uh, Uchigatana once more. Let's upgrade weapon, Uchigatana, and then plus eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have the requi- What? Oh, that's right. That's right. No, interest. no, I do have interest. Just hold on, pal. I totally, I totally forgot about that. So we need to go to Smithing Grounds, which is a good chance to see if we killed that Crystal Lizard three times or not. So it should respawn, like like I said, two times. Like you see it once, and then you kill one boss, it respawns. Kill another boss, it respawns. But you can kill a third boss, and then does it respawn three times? Yeah, it's there. Look at that. So yeah, I guess it respawns three times then. Hard stone shard. That's not what we want, but that's okay. Yeah, so I guess all the crystal lizards in the game respawn three times, except there is one world that has an extra level, which I didn't really want to say because that's kind of like a spoiler, but... Yeah, so I guess in one world, the crystal lizards spawn four times. Respawn four times. Huh, interesting. Okay, hi, filthy man. I need four of these. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yes, we can buy more, but the thing is I don't know what upgrade materials we're going to need for the next uh, level. So we're just going to see. We're not going to have them, though. Uh, we'll have to uh, do some more exploring because that's the better way than just grinding out the lizards, I think. Because you'll naturally, if you're trying to get every item in the game, you'll naturally get a lot of the stuff that you need. I can pull so, upgrade weapon, Ujigatana, plus eight. Bop! There it is. Now, what do we need for plus nine? Sharp stone shards, which are easy. You can just buy those from the filthy man like we just did. Uh, we already have enough large sharp stone shards, which is fantastic. And then we need six sharp stone chunks to bring it to plus nine. I think we, yeah, we just went from plus seven to plus eight. We need just six chunks. And I happen to know where we're going next does have a ton of chunks. So that is great. We'll do that next. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we are going to store all those materials we just got. And then we're also going to store seven of these just because I'm obsessive. Good. And we should be good to go. Yes, indeed. All right, we are good. Uh, last thing, let's repair everything. I can pull the well, that makes it easy. Okay, and then switch this back to the cling ring, and switch this back to the ring of regenerate the regenerator's ring, I should say. All right, there we go. Uh, so if you're keeping track again, all that we have left is world. Th I guess I'll give it away. So this world has a, a last. You know, all the others have pretty much three levels. This one has four. So we have this level, and then we have one after, although it's pretty short. So two levels here, and uh, three levels there, and that's it. Like I said, this game is short. And then all we have to do after that is just uh, we can move every world to Black World Tendency and uh, then kill the final Black Phantom and the Primeval Demon. And that's pretty much like 100% of the content. Now, there's going to be some stuff that take a lot more, but it's just not worth it, as I said, but... That's pretty much like, yeah, all the big stuff. So anyways, like I said, hope you've been enjoying this playthrough because it's going to be short and sweet. Thanks so much to the people that like the video. Thanks so much to the people that leave comments on the video. And thank you to the patrons that go the extra mile. Very much appreciate it. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me, GV. Thanks so much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to watch more of me, I'm live on Twitch pretty much every day. Link in the description. If you want to support what I do, Patreon is the best way. Link is in the description. And either way, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.